Hello and welcome to Oworm. Today we'll be taking a look at the anatomy of the salamander. Because of their slender bodies and long tails, salamanders look somewhat like lizards, and people often confuse the two. But lizards are reptiles, whereas salamanders are amphibians, just like frogs and toads. Lizards have scales and claws, but you can see here that salamanders do not. So if I turn it over, you can see on their limbs it doesn't have any claws. Lizards also typically have dry skin, but salamanders need to stay moist because many of them use their wet skin as a surface through which to breathe. Salamanders might spend most of their time in land or in water, depending on their species. But all salamanders need to have offspring in water, so a nearby water source is critical. Many salamanders also go through a process called metamorphosis. Just like tadpoles transform into frogs, salamanders transform from larvae, which often live entirely in water, to adults that can live on land and in water. It's not a very dramatic change, but some changes include the loss of gills, development of lungs, stronger leg muscles, and a reduction of the dorsal fin. So let's take a look at the external anatomy. You can see that the body of the salamander is elongated and stout, with very well-developed musculature around the body and the tail. Salamanders use their limbs in combination with side-to-side -side body movements, like this, to move. And now here you can see the dorsal fin, right here, which aids the salamander in swimming when in the larval stage, but becomes reduced during metamorphosis. So now let's look at some of the other structures. On the skin, you can see these horizontal grooves right here. And these are called costal grooves. They help keep the skin moist by channeling water over the surface of the body. So now let's zoom into the face. So here are the eyes. Here's one right here. The eyes of most salamanders are adapted primarily for vision at night. In some aquatic species, the eyes are less developed, and in some cave-dwelling species, they can be absent or covered with a layer of skin. In amphibious species like this tiger salamander, the eyes are compromised, and they're nearsighted in air and farsighted in water. Here are the nostrils, which the salamander uses to detect smells. In salamanders, olfaction is used for territory maintenance, recognition of predators, and courtship rituals. However, when hunting prey, vision is likely the most preferred sense. So here is the mouth, and you can see the tongue inside. And here you can see the external gills. So these things. Right here, this is a limb, but these are the external gills. Respiration differs among the different species of salamanders and can involve gills, lungs, skin, and the membranes of the mouth and throat. So like I said before, this is a tiger salamander, which has gills in the larval stage, but loses them during metamorphosis. So you can see that this salamander is still in the larval stage because you can see its external gills right here. And when I flip it over, you can see these gill filaments, which increases the surface area for gas exchange. The salamander takes in water through its mouth and passes it through these gills to breathe. I do think that this salamander is in a pretty late stage of development because while the gills are still present here, you can see the leg muscles here are pretty well developed and the dorsal fin here has reduced in size. So here is the cloaca, which is the common exit for the digestive and urogenital systems. So now let's take a look at the internal anatomy. So place the salamander ventral side up and pin down the limbs like this. Now cut carefully with a pair of scissors from the cloaca to the jaw and peel away the skin.
So now when I peel the skin back, you can see this connective tissue that connects the skin to the underlying body wall here. And this is called the fascia. And here you can see these parallel striations along the body wall. And these are the external oblique muscles. These muscles help the salamander both swim and walk by helping it move its body from side to side. So now I'm going to cut into the body wall as well. Also cut horizontally just next to the limbs. And then you can pin down the skin and the body wall like this. So let's take a look at the internal structures. So I can tell right away right now that this salamander is female because of these large structures that take up the majority of the space in the body cavity. So these are the two oviducts, so these and this one on the other side here. These two oviducts secrete varying numbers of layers of material around each egg cell creating the jelly-like coating characteristic of salamander eggs. So in the center, this black mass is the ovary, so here's an ovary and here's another ovary, which produces the egg cells. And after the eggs are completed in the oviduct, fertilization happens internally in the cloaca, after which the salamander lays the eggs. Okay, so all of this is the oviduct, and you can see it goes all the way up here, and all the way up over here on the other side too. They take reproduction very seriously apparently. The ovaries themselves also go up all the way up to here and all the way up to here. Okay, so now this large dark structure at the top here is the liver. The amphibian liver performs the same functions as in other animals including energy and protein metabolism, synthesis of urea, detoxification, and production of bile. That bile is then stored in this structure here, this small pouch structure, which is called the gallbladder. So above the liver here is the heart. Salamanders have a three-chambered heart, which means it has two atria, but only one ventricle. The disadvantage of this is that oxygenated and deoxygenated blood can mix, which reduces the efficiency. In humans and other mammals, the heart has four chambers, which allows for complete separation of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood. Now here on either side of the body are the lungs. So here's one, and here's another one right here. You can see that they're very simple and sac-like, unlike the more complex organs found in mammals. They're actually, I don't think they're fully developed, so they're probably going to be bigger when they're fully developed. So while the tiger salamander here loses its gills and develops lungs to breathe air as an adult, most salamanders actually don't have lungs or gills as adults. These are commonly called lungless salamanders, and they breathe through their skin and the thin membranes in their mouth and throat. So here below the liver, you can see the stomach, which is this pouch-like structure here, where the food is broken down and digested. And if we follow the digestive tract up here, we can see the esophagus, so right here. Um, and after the food leaves the stomach, it enters the small intestine, which is right here, which absorbs the nutrients from the food. So all of this is the small intestine. So now this divot right here is the pyloric valve, which controls the flow of food from the stomach to the small intestine. And right next to the small intestine here, it's a bit hard to see. So here's the pancreas, this triangular fleshy bit here. And the pancreas produces digestive enzymes and hormones. So it's this triangular structure right between the small intestine and the stomach. So now here, next to the stomach, this banana-shaped gray structure is the spleen, which plays an important role in the immune system. 
In amphibians, the spleen also produces, stores, and releases red blood cells. So now this film that attaches all of these organs to the body wall, which you can see here, right here, is called the mesentery tissue. Now after the food leaves the small intestine here, it enters the large intestine here, which is where feces is made and stored until it can be eliminated via the cloaca. And here towards the tail are the kidneys. They're these soft, dark, and flat organs right up against the body wall here. There's another one on this side, but it's a bit hard to see. So the kidneys filter the blood and produce urine. I, that's the end of the salamander dissection. Thanks for staying, lads. Here's a fun fact about salamanders to send you on your way. A species of salamander called the giant palm salamander uses its tongue to catch insects and can shoot out its tongue with more instantaneous power than any known muscle in all animals. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe for more.